Welcome to episode 57, Boomer Guitar Sessions, and today what we are going to do is make music theory fun. Now here's the thing, like back when I was a kid, I remember the Aaron Shear music theory book was the only music theory book guitar players like myself had, and it was boring because I wasn't playing counterpoint music. I knew box, beret, and E minor, but that was not really my, that wheelhouse in music. And it's like, uh, what I'm trying to say is, I didn't like music theory, and I feared it, and I disliked it. I had a distaste for it. And um, that's because it was represented and presented in a weird, wrong way for a lot of a lot of my years. And then I had a teacher like Scott Anderson who I who changed me. He gave me a bigger bigger look view of it. Teachers at Berkeley, I got a better view and it's like that's what we're going to discuss today. How do you make it fun? Because if it's not fun, you're not going to use it. If you're not going to apply it, you're not going to put it into your practice sessions. We want to we want to get the most out of our practice sessions, so mu music theory in my opinion has to be involved. OK, because for me, never it is never about just playing the tablature off the printed page. That's not that's not what musicians do. That's what some people do. But when you are really trying to develop yourself, you want to understand the music that you're playing. And so we're going to talk about music theory and how to make it fun. And my solution is relatively simple, I think. I'll be as simple and direct as possible. Apply music theory to music you like. Understand music, the rules of music, how music works in the music that you listen to, and importantly, the pain points and the, and the problems you're having with guitar, with understanding the music that you like. Uh, what, is, what, is, what is stopping you from growing? What is, those are like your pain points. Like, what, what can I get beyond? Okay, how can music theory help you with that? So that's what we're going to discuss today. We're going to we're, we're discuss about making it fun, applying it to um, to something that you like. So now this came from a YouTube post, somebody on a YouTube group that said, I'm 30 years old, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm 30 years old, and how do I make music theory fun? Because I don't have time to not, for it not to be fun. And I get that. I understand that. And it's a great question. Okay, so what we're going to do, music theory is fun. This guy, he, he said it like, well, I like heavy metal. So heavy metal has no music theory. Yeah, every style of music. If you have a, I don't know, a teacher that has the ability to analyze, everything can be understood through music theory, not just the stuff that is classical or jazz or whatever. Okay, so in heavy metal, some of the things we need to know about heavy metal if we were to trace its history, it goes back to Black Sabbath, in my opinion. Okay, they were the big bang of heavy metal. And what they did is they were trying to make music that uh, was reflected of the times. Um, it was like Vietnam War. It was like generals gathered in their masses, just like witches at Black Masses. They, they, they saw, they were basically trying to write music that both reflected the times that they were living in but also scared the pants off of people who went to see their themselves because they noticed that people will go see uh movies like black sabbath that was a movie first they would go see black sabbath and get the bejesus scared out of them and and it was like a horror film would do that to people and they would go in in hordes so that's part of how they they became so how did they get their sound how do they how do they sound heart um intimidating scary horrific whatever the first first ingredient was probably the minor key okay when i say something's in a minor key we have major we have minor we have dominant those are the three keys that I, we deal with in in the guitar collective and variations within them but major minor and dominant metal guys a lot of them only know minor keys okay so that is uh that is what we're going to talk about today how do we make it fun so what is the natural minor scale so the natural minor scale is uh you can construct it from a pattern of half steps and whole steps so it's going to be a single whole step followed by a half step 
two whole steps followed by a half steps and another two whole steps. So what that means is if I start on a note, say E for example, everything we're going to do is an E for reasons I'll explain. If I go a whole step, then followed by a half step, two whole steps, followed by a half step, another two whole steps, and that's the E natural minor scale. Now, metal musicians also, it's a riff-based music, and they center around minor keys, but they also center around minor keys around open strings. And what that means is the open string on a guitar. The, the riffs come from that. So riffs, the open string is... A, a lot of the times the part of the riff of the of the of the song so it's a minor key but it's also around an open string and in both of these examples that was e minor so the first step that i would do if you call yourself a metal musician and you want to be a metal musician and you want to understand this music that you love the first thing you want to do is understand that the key of e minor has one sharp when it is in key it is F sharp, and it's E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. One sharp, okay? And that, how do we know that? Because that, those were the notes I just played. Okay? So that's the first little bit of music theory information. Now, we can find those notes all over the fingerboard, and it would be good for us to do that, and we're going to use that in this lesson. Okay, so... Um, Next thing we need to know is say, uh, like if we we're playing acoustic guitar. What chords are used in this key? So it's going to be E minor. It's going to be G major. These are going to be common chords. E minor, G major. And you want to learn everything you can about this stuff. Um, e minor, G major, C major, and D major in there. A minor is in there. B minor is sometimes in there, but a lot of times what they'll use instead of B minor is B7. That's another kind of minor. All right, so with that said... All those chords are common chords. Another chord that we, we see often is the D slash F sharp. Now, even in heavy metal music, heavy metal music is not just power chords. Sometimes we have the... We have, we have a lot of the, the, the broken chording, a lot of the kind of the metal ballad things. So you want to learn, you want to learn the bigger chords. Okay. So that is, that, that is the next step. So learning some of the open chords, learning a lot of songs in the key of E minor and recognizing that it's in the key of E minor. Okay. Like Heart of Gold by Neil Young. Uh, let's see. Uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams or Green Day. Uh, there's a, that, that's a thousand songs. There's some standard progressions in the key of E minor. Okay, so next step is when we think of heavy metal, we think of we think of power chords. Okay, so what what can we do with power chords? Okay, so we, if we have an E, what is a power chord but a root and a fifth? Now, what I would then do is I would like, okay, let's, 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 let's figure out the power chord chord scale. So that's E, D, C. That's a common progression. All right, so then it goes to A. B, then A, and then we can do a, a, a G, and then 
I can move my first finger down a fret. I call this the D slash F sharp or the half step substitution chord. <laughs> So that, that, those are power chords, and now how many songs do we know that... that are nothing more than that? Now that, by the way, this thing that I'm doing here... Like, that's called pedaling where we go back and forth on the, the open string. And as I said, a lot of heavy metal is open string rooted because we get that pedaled note in there. That's a part of the riff. Okay, so with that said, next step, I guess. Okay, so we have the power chord. Um, maybe analyzing some of the earliest of heavy metals. So as I said, Black Sabbath to me started it all so, uh, so that we have F sharp and everything else is natural. So what kind of riffs do we have that? So your, the riffs are going to be around around any kind of different uh, heavy metal um, groove that is an E minor using E minor. So that that this is a backing track I created. So So that is all, that is all. That's natural, as a natural minor riff. So the natural minor, okay. So if you want to do just stuff that was in key, historic heavy metal stuff, listen to lots of Judas Priest, listen to lots of Iron Maiden. And they do leave key, but it's like that, that, that seems like a starting off spot. And then what we can also do, even still in key, we can harmonize, the, this is a power chord. We can harmonize with more things than just fifths. That's 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 a so this is the fifth. What I can do instead is thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths. That's all in the key of E minor, but what I'm doing is harmonizing each of these chords. And then in an earlier episode here, we call watchtower changes, which are these. Okay, so. Harmonizing with other notes. The C chord has that F sharp in it. When we go up to the four, fourth, there's a sharp four. And then what I would do, like in songwriting, when I was a kid, I would get together with my, my buddy who is, he has, uh, if anybody remembers Matt Mead, what I loved about his drumming is he was, a, he was a clock. He would lay into a groove. It would be, the vibe was there. The clock, he was, he was a clock and it, like, he wasn't the guy from Rush, but the guy from Rush would, did not inspire me to write. So 
something like this. So the deal is, so the deal is what we what we try to do is we take the concepts that we're learning. So with that different harmony, we can harmonize off of more notes than just your power chords. That's music theory. Okay. So next step. Okay. So we have power chords. We have the in key stuff and power chords. We have open chords. We've been talking about. Uh, um, Half step substitution can be done wherever there's a half step. I can move that, and make that little movement. Okay, so um, so that 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 little half step movement. Okay, also the rhythms I'm using. Like if it's more kind of like old school Metallica. They used lots of 16th notes, lots of 16th notes. Okay, so the rhythms and the rests you're using, all that's in the music theory realm. So you can study those. These are all rabbit holes you can go down to make improve your playing. It, you learn how to do some of that 16th stuff. That gets you into like the Injustice for All period and, and the Ride the Lightning and, and the, and the um, Master of Puppets, all that kind of stuff. You hear that in the music that you love. Now, to me, this is all kind of like college. I don't know what kind of heavy metal you like because you might like lots of new stuff that I don't even know about. But this is like kind of like a base for all of that stuff. If you understand how to play in a minor key, it can be spread out to lots of things. Okay, so with that said, mapping out, um, we can play octaves. That's another thing. <laughs> play that in our rhythm parts and our lead parts okay next so one of the things we want to think about also is like okay who as i said we, we we talked about sabbath a little bit um what else can who else can we uh um can we check out so um mapping out your e natural minor scale and your open chords and your power chords and thinking about creating melodies, if we're in a key of E minor, what music theory affords you is if I know something has one sharp and all the rest are natural notes, if I play those notes, I'm not going to embarrass myself. And that is the thing that I love about music theory, that if we go on stage, we don't want to embarrass ourselves. We don't want to be guessing. It's like when I go to a doctor, I don't want him to be guessing at what he needs to do in order to uh, uh, fix my ailment, okay? Okay, that's the difference between like somebody who wants to be professional about things and, and somebody who doesn't. If you, you go on stage, you know what you're doing. So for something like that, so Sabbath was ring one. It's like this is this is kind of um. Let's listen to this. was okay so a little bit of minor pentatonic up here that I can play in a minor key but a lot of that was a natural minor scale so I'm mapping out my 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 minor scales all over the fingerboard and, and honing in so 
again, my number one bit of advice in music theory and heavy metal is really just hone in on the key of E minor first, because that is in thousands of songs. It's like the history of it's this E minor, and then when you get into the drop D stuff, it would be D minor. So, but um, so something like. <laughs> So the idea is not just playing what is it written on the tablature. That is never, it was never a goal of mine just to do that. We don't stop there. We want to be able to elaborate. We want to be able to repurpose. Okay, so if we were to uh, say we learn our scale positions. So here's a scale position. This is a favorite scale position of mine. <laughs> Seventh position, E natural minor scale. Just by learning that, just by learning that, we can we can practice playing melodically over top of E minor things. If we wanted to, uh, um, the other thing we can do is we can think horizontally. Arranged all the notes in the key of E minor, up and down A, up and down like horizontally on your strings. Okay, so we can play this way. We can play this way. And then eventually, what all the good guys do is they just, there's a, they're all over the place. And it's seamless. Okay. So, um, taking that, then we take all that thought that I just gave you, and we, we, we take it to, we, uh, we take it to a, a backing track. Let's see. Not that backing track. All right, so uh, I take it to a backing track, and I just I just spend an hour, hour and a half. What can I get out of this? Okay, I'm not trying to play what's on the tablature. I'm not trying to play. I'm trying to, you know, we can do that, and certainly that that's part of it, maybe, but we don't stop there. That's we are creative. Guitar players are creative. So that would be something like this. Let's check it out. I'm just I'm just going off I'm just like practicing my thing and it's like listening to guys that play it and how do they interpret this and how do my favorite players play it how do my favorite players use music theory so if your guy is Alex Skolnick how does he use this stuff well how does he phrase how does slash phrase how does Tony Iommi use use, use scales and, and patterns and phrasing okay so um music theory E minor branch out to A minor branch out to D minor uh in heavy metal, but also, but also, as I said, listen to your favorite players and how do they, they do all this stuff. Learn your fingerboard, all, all the stuff in your fingerboard, arpeggios. Okay, when I say an arpeggio. Okay, so that's an arpeggio. You put those into your solos and you start sound, sounding like, like, uh, uh, like, 
like Ingve and like Marty Freeman and all that, all those kind of guys. And uh, Kirk Hammett, even he, old school Kirk Hammett used this stuff. So with that said, I think that's it. I think to check out, check out these classic, classic, some of the classic stuff. Try to get that in your fingers and then build on and then you take in what you like. You take in what you like. Start with E minor. Start with E minor. Learn everything you can about it. Learn to play loud. Learn to play soft. Okay. Um, that's it. This is Rod, Boomer Guitar Sessions, episode 57. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Any questions at all. It doesn't have to be about this video. Put them in the comments. This is what I want to learn. I'm here for you. Tell your friends. Boomer Guitar Sessions. See you next time. Enjoy the process. Hi, this is Rod from Boomer Guitar Sessions. I personally wanted to thank you for being part of our community. If you like what we're doing here and you want to see more of it, please hit the like, subscribe, and share. And this helps me spread my musical messages to all over the world. Thank you. I appreciate you. And always remember, 